Cool. I'm Jack Lutz, Troy Segner, and uh, here with us uh, with the El Paso Hill Post, we have some esteemed guests with us. Very esteemed. We have Ethan Hawk, we got Ben Dickey. Of the uh, film that's coming out here, you need to check it out over at the Alamo Draft House. It's called Blaze. You might Blaze. have to wait for the second showing. I think it'll all sold out. You guys have a, a third uh, showing, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 third showing. The good news about that one is by that one, Ben and I will be very loaded and we're accumulating. Very interesting. Just, awesome. just awesome. off the rails, but full of wisdom. But you, yeah. we, you gotta eat first, and you gotta have a nice cushion to. So I mean, alcohol. I just like to get just. <laughs> just <stupid. laughs> Have you guys had a chance to have some nice El Paso cuisine yet? We did have yeah. L and J last night. Oh, okay. Right. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're going yeah, we're going. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. I can't yeah, but I think we'll bleep it out. We'll bleep it out. I'm surprised people haven't thrown the cheese at you yet. Or oh, they yeah. yeah. told us about everything. Well, I've been here before. I, I like the food here is great. The people mm -hmm. here are great for sure. Yeah, the, the place you got to go to is is uh, Jaime's Hut. Three yeah, o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's a Mexican yeah. restaurant open three until 24 hours. Yeah. But you know, here's the good yeah. news about your city. You ready? Yeah. Everybody we talk to, every Uber driver, mm -hmm. everybody interviews, tells us a different restaurant. Yeah. That means there's a lot of There's so many good ones here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you know, so you go to Fort Worth, and, you know, it's really <laughs> only a couple. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're proud of this place, man. Yeah, and, uh, we really are. I got the news about the interview yesterday with you guys, and Trey uh, shoots me a text, and he says, all right, we've got... We got Ethan and Ben coming up tomorrow. Uh, don't wear a tank top. Wear, wear something <laughs> nice. And as one does for an interview, you know, you, you brush up. You know, you look up. Sure, and then, sure you Google. Yeah, you know, sure. it, it, Wikipedia, last ditch effort. But uh, sure. get to that in a second. But yeah, you know, I'm looking you up, Ethan, and then just I'm bombarded with this news about, and we host a, a geeky talk show called Talk Nerdy to Me, so this is a little apropos. Well, Ben and I are nerds, so right. we're your type of people. We, we just had to throw that out there, and I'm just, I'm just sitting we here talking about me bad enough as a superhero. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm, I'm not even putting that into context, into context here. They I'm, weren't I'm, either. I'm, I'm yeah. Like, it's just <laughs> Ethan Hawke hates superhero films. <laughs> Ethan Hawke doesn't like <laughs> Logan Hogan. sucked. I know, well here's the qu thing. I had no idea how yeah. sensitive superheroes oh. were. If I did, I would have been a lot more <laughs> gentle. Let me correct the record, okay? Sure. The reason I was talking about Logan is because I love it, all right? I love superhero movies. I like every kind of movie. I don't think there's a difference between high art and low art. There are movies that people put their heart into, and there are movies that people try to cash in on. And the ones that I like are the ones that people put their heart into. And you can feel it in a superhero movie, or you can feel it in a horror movie, or you can feel it in some art house movie. What I was talking about is that there is so much money being spent commercially making it so that that's all we see. You know, and there aren't rooms for the movies that I grew up on. One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest, Amadeus. Those, these type of movies would now be art house movies. And they're made to feel fringe, and they're made to feel small. You know, I was making the joke that if, if, if Logan and Dark Knight and, uh, you know, Doctor Strange are great art films, what is Fanny and Alexander? Do you know? Nothing is the Nothing. problem. And how long would that be in the theater today, yeah, you know, would if be. that came That's out, right? right? And I, the most, so my point, I, those are my favorite superhero movies. Doctor Strange, Logan, right. Dark Knight, those are great films. But they're not the only thing there is. And young people grow up today thinking that's, you know. It's that's not a real serious. movie unless, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was there... If there's a green screen and not involved, then it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a, a real movie. And they, the, the, our country turns everything into a competition. They want to tell you what's its score on Rotten Tomatoes, what's it, how much box office did it make. And when I was growing up, those things didn't exist, and you could just absorb a movie for how it meant to you. It does, there's no game to win. You know, that's not what art is. Right, one of the best he things said. is hearing something word of mouth. Yeah. Know, and then it out for yourself. Yeah, man, that's what, exactly right. Whether that be with music, film, uh, you know, women, boy, you know, boyfriends, <laughs> girlfriends, whatever. Hey, you can see that on the internet now too. Yeah. Hey, let's see what that's all about. So, uh, let's talk about uh, the, let's talk about Blaze here, uh, the, the film that you directed, Ethan, that uh, wrote and it, the stars right here. The stars right here, and one of the most interesting things about this film is also the genesis of how this came to be. You guys have known each other what, 15 something mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you kind of, you guys were jamming out to. Uh, to blaze and well, it happens slower than that. The truth is, you know how well you, we sh our girlfriends are best friends, right? Since right. like the second, third grade, and so we would go on vacations together, and those two would gab all night long, and we a friendship happened. 
I grew to love Ben's music. Ben's in a band called the Blood Feathers in Philly that I loved. Just, they were just balls out, great rock and roll band. And I really believed in Ben. And that band was breaking up. And I'd been saying for five, six, seven years that Ben should take up acting. Because yeah. he's, I just, I love the way he thinks and the way his, when he sings a song, he really performs it. He lives the song. And that's how the idea of Ben playing Blaze came up. See, so he says. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so tell me what else happened at the Super 8 Motel when you guys met. Right. Oh, tell me what else happened. We talked about uh, Steve Martin. We talked about food. We talked about which cafeteria in the South we preferred, Frankie's, Luby's, or Wyatt's cafeteria. Luby's. Frankie's all the way, man. Ruby's all the way. Ruby. Yeah. Is your Bill Clinton impression still point on? Is it still on point? You know, I don't think it's a... Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Ethan. <laughs> uh, I went to see Gattaca when I was president. I thought that was really interesting that film. But anyway. But yeah, and uh, I, I wanted to get back to that. Uh, what was your first impression when, when uh, listening to Blaze Foley first? That I couldn't believe I never heard him before. Right. You know, I've uh, when I was ten years old, I knew who Lead Belly was and Robert Johnson was. I, I had someone help me down that lane. Jimi Hendrix uh, had a blues album come out in like 1990 where on the cover of the album it had like 50 mosaic, it was like a mosaic of blues artists that made up Jimmy's face. And I took that and I went down that map. So I was familiar with simplicity, a little with a lot. Mississippi John Hurt, Lightning Hopkins, Fred McDowell, uh, Blind Willie McTell, all these fellas who to me, I think music's magic. I think these are magicians of sound. I think that they, um, it, they, they're not here anymore, but they're sure here. They're absolutely here. Blaze is with them. He has honed a tool. It's his guitar picking, it's his voice, it's his mind, it's his humor, it's his compassion, it's his kindness, it's his craziness. And when we heard all that music, we, I say all, it was six songs that we really sort of listened to first. You know, a chime goes off when you hear something that turns you on and you wonder how it never was there before. And, there was a legend behind it. There was four different uh, accounts of how he died. None of them were right. There was the fact that Towns loved him, and Towns is a wily spirit that still circles around all these people that make music. And there was this legend of a guy who wandered around with a beard like a wizard, talking to flowers and writing these wonderful songs. And over the years, we learned more and more and more. And by, the, by 2014 and 15, this documentary that Kevin Triplett made, who's a wonderful individual called Duck State, Duct Tape Messiah came out. Now he, he made that movie over nine years. Why would you labor that long over something and spend your own money unless you believed in it, right? And we thought that that was wonderful. And New Year's Eve of 2015 going into 16, I was just picking on the guitar, waiting for everybody to put their overcoats on to go out into the ice cold New York air. And he said, you ought to play Blaze Foley in a movie. At the end of the night, when we'd ingested all of our fun uh, party trinkets, he looked at me like, you know, this is going to happen. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds cool. <laughs> Here we are, man. Here we are. Steve, that was Steve. Ethan, Ethan uh, being from Texas like myself, man, we love a good Southern story. We love a good mm -hmm. Texas story. And usually with a musical biopic, it's usually about somebody that we already know about. It's usually mm -hmm. about somebody that, that's mm -hmm. well known and we've heard the story before. But Blaze, we, we really don't know. A lot of us don't know who he is. A lot of us don't know uh, what he's about or, or the songs that he put out. What I knew growing up is that, you know, he put out a song that, uh, you know, Willie and Merle, uh, Merle mm -hmm. and Dr. Really right, yeah. put out. And, same song. Right, but he's got a hell of a story to tell. He's got a great story. People often come up to me and they say, oh, you made this movie, Blaze. I'm sorry, I didn't know who Blaze was. I'm like, that's the reason we made the movie. <laughs> You're not supposed to know who Blaze was. I mean, it's great if you do, but part of the idea of making the movie is to share with you this music that you might not know. And also to share with you the idea that there's so much creativity happening around us and so much beauty happening around us that goes unnoticed all the time. People like Blaze, the Blazes of the world, men and women who are painting their picture, you know, folk art, you know, front porch music, whatever you want to call it that it's, it's beautiful and it's happening around us all the time and it often goes unnoticed. And so we're trying to celebrate that. And I'm really interested in seeing the cast too. You, got, you have a, a loaded cast here. You got uh, Aaliyah, a Shawcat is also in it. 
uh, Charlie Sexton, yeah, uh, Charlie Scott, Scott yeah. has a, you know, tells us. Yeah. For, for music, music lovers, lovers, that's a right. great thing. And, and also, speaking of music lovers, you've got a, you know, a little unknown guy named uh, Chris Christopherson. He's How an up and comer. Chris is an up and comer. Did you see him open up for Linda Ronstadt uh, <laughs> over at the <laughs> Troubadour? <laughs> you chased him out in the parking lot? No, no but you know, it's funny that you bring that up because, you know, that for people that don't know, Dennis Hopper did see Chris Christopherson open for Linda Ronstadt at the Troubadour and cast him in the last movie. In a lot of ways, I was trying to send a subconscious message to both Ben and the audience that this has been done before, the idea of a musician acting in a big way. Chris is, he's so become such a wonderful actor that people don't differentiate between the actor Chris and the writer Chris. He's just Chris Christopherson, he stands for something. You know, he's, he, he's, he stands for something that all of us love and believe in because he tells the truth, he's an artist, and I thought it was, a little wing and a prayer that maybe Chris would bless the movie and play Blaze Foley's father. Who plays, if you're making a movie about a, a, a legend, who could play a legend's father? Right? Well, Chris Christopherson. And bringing it back to Ben. And how was it, I'll ask this in front of you guys here, how was it seeing him come into his own? How was it seeing him grow into the character, the man that was Blaze Foley on set it that, was, as the cameras were rolling? Uh, it, it sounds weird. It was just exactly what I hoped would happen. I've been his friend for years, and I've seen him play, and I've seen him be with people. I've seen him take care of my kids. I've seen him talk to my friends. He's been there for me when I had good reviews, and he was there for me when I had bad reviews. And, uh, and the person that he is, the artist that he is, I wanted to, I wanted to give him an, an at-bat to contribute in that way. And it just, one part of you can't believe it, that it's going as well as it is. Another part of you can believe it because that's why you did it. Because, I mean, watching people f fall in love with Ben's performance is a great, it's what, it's what, I've been acting my whole life. So to help somebody else get to do it is very meaningful to me. You almost made a blush. I can see you almost <laughs> turn the color of your pants. <laughs> I'll, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap it up with this. Uh, you did an interview, Ethan, uh, not too long ago on the Graham Norton show that mm. I just couldn't forget. And, you talked about your experience working with Robin Williams yeah, on yeah. Uh, you know, the set of Dead Poets Society and how he changed your career and how he hooked yeah. you up with an age and how he just changed the trajectory of your career. Where you are right now, going from actor to director, do you feel that that experience in your life has carried over into today, where you are now, and helping others? You know, the one, I have a bunch of things to say about that, but one of the strange things about having a 20-year-old kid, you know, is you see how these experiences are happening. I have a daughter who's 20, and experiences happen to them, they're gonna permeate and affect her whole life. And I didn't know, I thought it was cool, I was working with Robin Williams, that was amazing, I was in this cool movie, but I didn't know that it would vibrate through my whole life and change the way I think. It's even funny, when I, you know, when I was, when Blaze Foley was shot and killed, I was making Dead Poets Society. Right? And when somebody the other day, and I didn't even know this, but somebody the other day we were doing an interview asked Ben when he was trying to discover acting, who did he think of? And you said, Jonathan Winters. Yeah, who, who is Robin's hero? You know, and there's, there's this weird, and Blaze, the more I think about it, is kind of like a Jonathan Winters of country music, meaning he's a, there's a little Frank Zappa to Blaze Foley. There's, there's a little punk rock. You know, the cowboy mystique is so full of tough guy. He would take the edge off it by wearing an E.T. phone home sticker on it. You know, he'd put a Nike swoosh with duct tape on his cowboy boots. And fearless, you know. Jonathan Winters, Robin Williams, both no net, you know. They didn't care. They were, there, was, there was no way they were going to fall. And that is, Jonathan Winters, to me, was a magician. Play a little nap. Robin Williams was a magician in, in his, like... God, any interview you see with either one of those guys, going Jonathan going back to the 50s and 60s, like he, I mean, he didn't, it didn't look like he had planned anything. He looked like he would go out there and just start looking around and talking and taking what the universe was giving him. And, and Robin, the same way. And that's what Robin, and when we were talking about acting and doing this, I was encouraging Ben just to follow his own voice in the way that Robin would. The way you see, the beauty of watching Jack Nicholson act, right, is you can tell he didn't know he was going to do that. He's... He's got, he's hypnotized himself into a place where he's actually living, you know? And so you're not watching some, oh, won't it be cool when I say the line like this? You're actually seeing Jonathan Winters. Robin didn't have a plan of what he was going to say. Right. Stuff would happen, you know? And, and he would react to it. 
And that was very beautiful. This is one of those interviews I wish would just go on yeah, forever, no. man. And yeah, hearing yeah. from you, Ben, also, I just, I can't believe this is your first film. I can't Me believe neither. it. So, <laughs> you know, best of luck to you with your new buddy you. career, man. Thanks, Guys, man. thank you very much for doing this. Thanks for thank having me. Thank you so much. Very much. The, film, the film is Blaze. Be sure to check it out at the Alamo Draft House. You added another showing. At three you, total. Three total. If you can't make it tonight, uh, check yeah, it out this weekend. weekend. And you yes. guys will be in San Antonio next. Yes, yes indeed. Thank you very much. Eight, nine tonight. Yep. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. What game that you get on Is a card or read